Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Jack and welcome back to Space Engineers. It's a Monday which means we're reviewing another creation from the Space Engineers Workshop. With me today I have the Nestorius GD-1. This is made by JD Hawks, Foul Play Chicken and Murdicist IX. JD Hawks is known for quite a few creations on the Space Engineers Workshop, particularly of uh, different sort of destroyers and frigates and things like that. We reviewed a few of his creations for. He DM'd me the other day and said, Jack, can you take a look at this one? Me and my friends recently made it. So I thought, you know, I'll spare Monday and take a look at it. Plus, I think we should give Star Wars a rest on this channel. We have been focusing on that quite a bit recently. But this is an experimental destroyer. And what makes it experimental is it's actually powered by a gravity drive, a thing I've not actually seen in Space Engineers for quite a while now. You can tell the ships are destroyed by the amount of rocket launchers got at the front here, especially the door as well. Um, there's a door at the front of a ship. I find that quite funny along with the camera up here. So yeah, it's an experimental destroyer and it's designed very well. Just looking around it, already the ship does actually look quite good. I've got it next to Mars and the uh, ice planet, the uh, moon I guess it is. I've got that up here. The engines around the back here, they look really colourful. I mean, look at that. I don't know why, but that just looks so good. I think the lighting engine slightly improved on space engines lately, but that does look really cool. But anyway, into the important features of the ship. It does have a gravity drive, which I will show you in a minute, but looking over the exterior of the starship is what we're going to do first. So given the fact it is a destroyer, it means we do have quite a few weapons on it. On the top deck here, we do have four rocket missile launches alone. Um, four missile launches, yeah. On the sides, we also have another missile launcher on each side, which I guess you can count as on top deck, but not really. We've got more things back here as well as, um, is that landing gear? What is this? Is that a landing gear merged in? Um, what is this? I'm trying to work out what that bit is. Oh, it is a landing gear placed that way. That's interesting and new, is it definitely? I'm generally confused by what this is back here. Um, Oh, it's a wheel suspension. That makes more sense. Okay, so there's a wheel suspension there. That was really weird there. It didn't make much sense. Interesting use of a tech block there of a wheel suspension to give more detail to the antenna section. Now that definitely does make more sense. I generally did confuse with that. We've got quite a few iron thrusters along here to propel this ship. It does have hydrogen thrusters and it's a gravity drive. Iron thrusters are generally used for like just cruising around. I think you can turn on a hydrogen thrusters for when you're in combat as well just to give you an extra bit of boost. I don't know if a ship's able to go in the planet's atmosphere. I don't think it would be from looking below it, but we could test it out later. Maybe if we gravity drive into the atmosphere, we'll see if it's able to use. The ship does contain a hangar bay as well, which well, was stood a minute ago, which we'll check in. Little sign up saying Nestorius. I think that's how you pronounce it. I might be wrong. Interior turrets on the outside here just to protect the hangar. Another missile turret on this side. We do have a connector down below as well, because the ship can dock in multiple different platforms to allow it. Lovely colour diagrams on it as well. We've also got heavy armour, obviously, to protect the underside, because that could be a weak spot. We don't have many weapons on underneath, apart from the two rocket launchers up top here. One thing I have noticed is not very many anti-missile things, anything like that, anti-air. No Gatling turrets. There is one at the back. That's it, and a, and a little turret there. But for now, it's not really a Gatling gun or anything. Personally, if this was my destroyer, I'd replace that with, um, or one of these turrets here, with a Gatling gun, just so you've got a bit of anti-missile fire, essentially. Then again, this is JD Hawks' design, not mine. We've got some slats here in the armor plating, sort of like an armor slam here. I would like the use of a blast door block here to add a bit more detail, especially sloping down inside there. Using corner slopes and more heavy armor going to the central pitch, which comes back around here to the front missile launchers. We've got 1, 2, uh, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No, we've not got 14. That's 12, Jack. How did you miss count? No, it is 13, yeah. I generally have a prob problem with numbers lately, jeez. Got windows and observation deck in here, which we'll check out in a minute, but also down here as well, we have more lights and things like this. Um, the light on the bottom there, it's kind of like a navigation light, along with the hydrogen thrusters there to keep the ship up in atmosphere. Also, this section in here is hidden. More iron thrusters, these are slowing down thrusters, indication lights along the side here as well. Making use of the blast or blocks to provide a curved sort of armor structure is really cool, in my opinion. Iron thrusters here are hidden and armor plated, so protected. Those are our side thrusters. I think we only have. Yeah, so we have six side thrusters in total, along with two hydrogen thrusters. Uh, no, actually. Is that. Five hydrogen thrusters, yeah. I was trying to count in between there for a minute. Ta da, numbers are not my strong point. Little signpost up here going to again, making use of a blast or blocks to bridge this bit in. Goes up to a bridge with more windows. Pretty cool. Antennas and everything are laid at the back here with a Gatling gun protecting all of these. We've got an antenna here. The pillars are basically made to look like they are antennas, but they're actually not. As well as beacons and laser antenna up here. Beacons probably move slightly in SOS signal, while the laser antenna is typically used as a laser antenna. Anyway, we're going to jump into the hangar bay right now as my character, and we're going to take a walk throughout the starship. This is the hangar bay here. Presumably, you could land a small little ship in here and refuel and dock things like that. Obviously, you wouldn't have many things uh, landing there. It reminds me of a Corvus from Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is the new ship here. Hangar right. There we go, we're closing the hangar up. Pretty simple. What other buttons do we have? We have uh, hangar vents and hangar left. That just turns the vents off. There we go. And it's locked. Perfect. Right, if we run up to here, let's see what we got. 
So this is the other part of the starship. Uh, we'll seal that and unseal. This is not going to unseal apparently. There we go. Then we've got a section here. This is sort of like a front observation deck. We can see planets we're going across. That actually looks pretty cool like that. Isn't it? Make a screenshot of that there, those two planets. That's the best way you can appreciate space units when you look at a window and see things like that. It's pretty cool. Got chairs here as well, obviously, for an observation deck. Bit of an armor placing here as well, leading up into an air vent. That's quite a cool idea of hiding up behind there. Gravity generator for front of the ship. Hangar bay warning helmet on, no O2 ahead. Another chair around the side here. If we go up to this deck here, we've got some interior turrets as well. Good to see more people making use of inter interior turrets. They are quite useful. This is presumably part of our gravity drive, I think, given the fact that the amount of gravity generators we do have. Uh, crew cryo chambers, brig and forward airlock. So here's our cryo chambers, very nice. Loving the atmospheric lighting. I'll turn my light off actually. We've got a script which is closing these as well. Brig and forward airlock. Uh, so here's our brig. Uh, the cells are locked. Can we open this way? Is it uh, cell lock? Unlock. There we go. So these are your brig cells. Pretty interesting. I'm not going to run over before I get locked in. And you have sort of a slats here to allow people. It's pretty a simple brig to be honest. Quite actually good. Oh, that's the uh, front door here, isn't it? We'll leave that one alone just before we get sucked out. Bricks are one excluded open. Oh, it's a good sort of display telling us when the doors are open and closed. Interesting. Right, if we run back through here, we will go up to the next level of ship. There's nothing back here, is there? Oh, there is a door. We'll try this. Here we go. So I think this is more of the engine room in here, isn't it? The jump drive is buried in here. Jump drive two travel and jump drive one is home. Pretty interesting. So we've got two jump drives. One you travel with and one almost like an emergency jump home. More stats screens here showing ore summary and ammo summary. Always good to have those on starships these days, especially if you're going to play it in survival. We'll go up the next flight of stairs, and I think this will lead to the main airlock, hollow briefing room, flight bridge, engineering, and combat bridge. Interesting. And this is the medical bay up here. There we go. Oh, nice view outside this place. Very cool. I love the lighting on the ship as well. Sort of a, a mix of um, this sort of creamish yellow, sort of ambient lighting, with the red armor, and the blue lights. Very interesting. Right, let's move through here. Let's do this again. Another signpost. Loads of computer consoles over here. Power time: 34 days, 18 hours, and 21 minutes. Well, we've definitely got a lot of power. This is another airlock in here, isn't it? Yeah, another airlock system in here. Oh, can we walk outside? Oh, nice. Oh, there we go. Go back in here again. Let's not step out there anymore. Um, oh, this is the hollow briefing room. Look at that. So it's a projected holographic table. That's really cool because you can walk through it. Nice. Uh, engineering and combat bridge. We'll test. Oh, we'll go over now. So this is um, the engine room I can prove, I presume? It looks like it. Another jump drive hidden in here as well as nuclear reactors. Alright, pretty interesting. And uh, are these mass blocks? They are, aren't they? There you go. Is this an airlock out here? Oh, this is the combat bridge up here. Oh, interesting. Oh, this is hidden inside here, the CIC. Interesting. And a stats block here telling us all the block information about the ship. Very interesting. Uh, medical base back here as well. Oh, good added like, depth of survival. This allows us to ship down us at time of start. And this is the stop. Oh, interesting. So that basically resets our timers. Is this like a map of the starship? Looks like it. Down here again, we've got more of the engineering room. And if we go around here, I'll take us back up to the bridge, which was... Um, oh, it's back here, wasn't it? Yeah. Almost got lost there. The bridge was up here, so this is the flight bridge, where you see most things from. Dun, 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 dun. What's this? This is... Um, shit, oh, I pressed the button anyway. Awesome, right, let's get in a seat and see where we can go. Speed. These ships don't actually work. They do work. These uh, screens are never very accurate, but they do work. Right, should we try number two? That must be how the drive works, yeah. Okay. Then we've got rocket launchers up here. What's number eight? That is number eight is all turrets. These are antennas. Pretty interesting. Oh, there we go. The gravity drive is building. Really interesting to see how that works. Nice. The gravity, you can see the gravity change there on the, the sort of middle right screen there. We can reach up to 100 very easy. So for now if I turn it off, well it's just 15 minutes. Ooh, let's slow down. We'll slow down very quickly. So that was it on there. If I try and now reach 100 meters with it off, which is what I'm about to do, we'll see how fast it takes to actually speed up. So this is with the gravity drive off. Very, very slow. Still getting there. 20 meters. 28 meters. You get the point. So now if I slow down again, or if I use the gravity drive and turn it on to slow down, there we go. And I turn it on now. There you go, look at that, we're already surpassing 28 meters, going up to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. There we go. This ship storms through gravity very well as well. Uh, we've got cameras up here, let's turn that off a minute. Um, jump drives cannot be used, jump into natural gravity fields. Oh yeah, that's weird, isn't it? 
T exit, there you go, cameras looking up there. Number six, we've got more cameras down here, and number seven, more cameras down there. Very interesting. Hangar bay doors are closed and open now. Very nice. Waiting towards that ship, and the turning speeds increase as well, which is quite nice. Let's keep going. Oh, that threw it off slightly there. So now the physics is upgraded, this ship does actually look really nice and functions well, because I think there was an issue with Gravity Drives before, where it'd spin out and end up breaking the ship, and nothing would actually be left. But instead, Benestris is actually looking a very awesome ship, particularly the Gravity Drive as well. It is very cool. So the benefits of the Starship is the Nesteros is vanilla and modless, meaning you can play it on any of your servers you want, regardless whether you have mods or not. It also ready for survival, um, and it's survival friendly. Yeah, survival friendly, and it's uh, safe for multiplayer and Clang. Well, Clang is apparently dead now, so there's no need to be afraid of Clang. If you didn't see this recent Spaces physics update, feel free ahead of my video where I chat a little about it and discuss the recent changes to the game. But this, guys, is Venestorius, a fantastic ship by JD Hawks and his friends. Do check it out using the link below for the workshop, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.